Today we'll be talking about the Kodak Mini 3 Retro. It is a camera and a Bluetooth printer. We'll be going over all the specs and we'll be taking it out into the field to find out if this camera is any good. You know the type of guy that was a jock in high school but ended up becoming a huge nerd? You know, someone that's not afraid to make a fool of themselves on the internet. And someone that likes to shoot Polaroid a little too much. Did I say huge nerd? You know, just an ordinary, everyday guy. Well, that's me. I'm just another Chris. First off, disclaimer, this camera was sent to me by Kodak to test out, but my thoughts are my own. I'm not making any money off of this. This printer camera combo has a 10 megapixel camera. Uh, and no, it is not zinc paper. I know you guys are probably wondering that and you guys know how I feel about zinc paper already. It uses the same processing technology as the Polaroid Mint, which I already did a video on going all about that. I'll leave a link in the description for you down below. But let's come back to the paper process and all that jazz in just a minute. It features a selfie mirror, no mounting options like a tripod mount, none of that. Uh, it has a digital screen on the back so you can preview your shots before you take them. It has a charging port, power button, and a shutter button. And that is it. So to load this guy up, all you gotta do is insert a paper cartridge uh, and you're ready to take your first photo, which the photo itself measures three by three inches, which is also the same size, almost the same size as a Polaroid. This is out the border, slightly smaller. I mean, just ever so slightly, you can still see a little bit of it, but basically the same size. And then it has a little tab at the bottom that you tear off once it is done printing. Now, before we head on out into the real world and test this guy out, let's walk through the menu real fast. When you turn it on, you, you can go straight to shooting. There's no extra buttons you have to push. Uh, the flash is automatically defaulted as off. Keep that in mind. To get into the menu mode, you just push the top left little icon there and you have options for borderless or you can add a border to your image, which is pretty cool. With the bordered option, uh, you can leave the tab on the bottom and not tear it and it looks like Polaroid, which is pretty cool. Uh, and you've got monochrome, it has filter options, which I mean, uh, if you're into that sort of thing, I've never really cared about that. So I just leave it at normal. Uh, then you get to the flash, which you have to manually turn on or off every time. Uh, it has a self timer all the way up to 10 seconds. And it has a selfie option, which I'm pretty sure it's just more of like a beauty filter. It doesn't, I, I don't think it really does anything else except maybe smooth out the image a little bit. I could be wrong. If you guys know more, uh, let me know. Cause I have, I can't figure this one out. And that is it. That is all of the options in this camera. Now enough about this. Let's head on out and actually use it and see if this thing is actually any good and make some art. I can't find a quiet place to shoot this video. <laughs> it is popping out here for a Wednesday. Today's Wednesday. So this camera is really fun. It's really cool to use. It's cheap-ish to shoot photos with. However, if you want to use this for street photography, walking around, going around shooting buildings and whatnot, just anything out doors is probably not the camera for you because you can't really shoot very fast you kind of have to uh, take one shot and then sit around and wait for it to print and it could take up to a couple of minutes depending if it's not your first photo or not if you're taking your first photo it takes a good couple of minutes for it to warm up this is not for street photography it takes some time to actually you know print the photos uh, and it's awkward because it's coming out of this. You can't just like take a picture, put it in your pocket, wait for it to print. You kind of have to hold it in your hand the whole time and hope uh, you're paying attention to when it's done because the wind could blow it away. I know I, that happened to one of my photos. It's not convenient at all. I haven't actually shot this in about half hour. It's warming up now. I just took it. You saw me take the picture. Uh, it's still warming up. Photo failed. Hmm. Okay. Let's try it again. Warming up again. Photo failed again. Okay, well, this is fun. All right, I took another one again. It's warming up. Problem is when a photo fails, you don't get your photo back. It just deletes itself. Yeah, photo pickup failed. All right, I think I got it to do something different. It says preparing now. Nope, never mind. Failed. 
right, I'm gonna put in a new pack of paper. I almost said film. I've only used, I think, one out of this? Uh, good thing I brought another pack. Okay, here we go. We'll take another one from this position. All right, print. Let's see what happens. Oh, hey, it's working. Uh, I think I have a dud of a pack or something. I don't know, but I'll see you back in the studio. All right, okay, okay, I'm sorry. I may have been a little harsh on this guy. It's not all bad. I think this thing is really fun uh, and I do actually like it. It's pretty cool. It has some quirks though. At the end of the day, it's just a digital camera. It's not film. So if you're looking to buy this to get that film look, this probably isn't the thing for you. Now I promised I would get into the paper process a little bit more. So, so it uses what is called dye sublimation and it's a four part system process and it goes on to paper. And in my test, if you want to get the best results out of the paper, uh, you're, you're going to want to use your phone and print the photos directly to it. Uh, here's the Hoosong sign taken with this camera. It's decent. It's not bad at all. But now here is the same sign, but taken from my phone. There's quite a big difference. You know, it was pretty nice outside. It hasn't been nice around here for a while. So why don't head on out and finish this out there? Let's do that. That's better. Ah, sunset, golden hour. It's beautiful out here. It really is. It's really, really, it's really nice. Noisy, but nice. And it looks like I didn't bring an extra battery and this one's almost dead. So hopefully I can finish this video. So my final thoughts on the camera is uh, mixed. I like the camera. It's fun to shoot with. It's a lot cheaper than it is to shoot with regular Polaroid or other instant film. Uh, however, on the downside, it's not something you can just go out and shoot a lot of photos in a quick amount of time. Uh, you do have to babysit it a little bit. Uh, like I was saying earlier, it takes a few minutes to take a photo, especially to have it warm up as well. It's super annoying. That's just my personal opinion. Uh, I think it's really cool to uh, use it as a Bluetooth printer, a wireless printer for your phone. Uh, it's really cool so for at parties and events or things like that. It's really cool just to be able to have it on the table and print photos at events. I think that's a really neat feature and that's honestly probably the most I'm ever actually going to use this for. So who is this camera actually for? Well, that is a great question. I would probably put it in the market of the casual shooters, the casual photographers. This isn't really for the diehards or the instant photographers. This probably won't be something that you'll enjoy shooting that much. But it does lend an actual unique look. I was a little surprised. At the Polaroid Mint, uh, it doesn't really provide any sort of look to the images. It's more of just like a crappy webcam from like a 2000s they put in that thing. Uh, I did do a full review on that if you guys want to check it out. Link in the description or card up above if you're on YouTube. But this one actually gives it a semi-unique look. A little bit more so than the Polaroid Mint. But then again, it's not the same process. It is different paper entirely and it's not sticky back too. So that may have an effect on it as well. But uh, I actually kind of dig the look of these images. I don't hate this camera and I don't really love it at the same time. It's cool looking. I'll use it every now and then uh, if I want to give photos to people. Like I've already done that with a few of them actually. Uh, and it's just a cool way to do that to give little keepsakes. I'm curious to know what your guys' perspective uh, of this camera is. So leave some comments below. Let's chat. Let's continue this conversation. I'm very curious. I haven't had any trouble with the battery. It seems to last quite a bit. I would assume it probably gets maybe 40 photos but I, I don't know for sure and I've been talking a lot of negative with this camera but there's a lot of pluses too. the construction of it seems to be pretty durable I love the selfie mirror on the front of it that is a neat touch and it works really well the flash on this is crazy bright it is really good complete darkness took a picture of my dog bandit and you can see him just fine without that flash effect that typical flashes give photos so I'm really impressed by that consider checking out the patreon page I got a lot of fun stuff over there you can join the monthly print club that is where I send you a photo every single month and it's signed super cool there's a link in the description below if you want to join that uh, it also just helps out the page helps it grow helps me be able to continue to make these awesome videos for you guys and check out the discord there's a lot of fun stuff going on over there as well now get out there make some art